Hey, we have more in-depth election coverage for you this morning. 12 News political analyst Joe Fleming standing by to discuss the results so far here in Rhode Island. First, though, we want to turn things over to reporter Anna Wernicke from our Washington Bureau. She's live at Joe Biden's campaign headquarters in Delaware. All right, so long night, but how is the Biden camp feeling at this early hour? Good morning. I would say cautiously optimistic. We heard from the former vice president just a few hours ago, and he said that he's comfortable with the results as they are right now. Obviously, this was not the election night that he had hoped for uh, or the sweep that they had hoped for. Um, they didn't win Florida, and that was a big upset for the Biden campaign. But Biden said it himself. He's confident that he will win Pennsylvania, and he's really hoping that this blue wave continues uh, and turns these previously red states uh, that have yet to be tallied too blue. So I would just say it's everyone's very cautiously optimistic here in Wilmington this morning. So Anna, President Trump also spoke uh, overnight just about four hours ago, about 2 a.m., threatening legal action to stop voting. How is the Biden campaign reacting to that? Well, what the president said earlier was not a surprise to the Biden campaign. Uh, they said that they were prepared for any legal battle uh, that President Trump was going to present. And uh, we, of course, uh, heard that from the president himself uh, just a few hours ago when he uh, threatened to go to the Supreme Court uh, to stop the remaining votes from being tallied. Uh, but Biden had really just stressed uh, the, that every vote needs to be counted very accurately. He said they need to be counted accurately and not expeditiously. All right, Anna, thanks so much for your uh, coverage for us this morning. Now live in studio, our political analyst, Joe Fleming. All right, Joe, so you know, we had you in studio yesterday. <laughs> You're very confident that Joe Biden was going to have a fairly sizable lead uh, in, in some of these states. And we're seeing that that was not the case in some of these no, states. So you know, what happened? Well, I think what happened was Donald Trump is stronger than people realize, and the polling data never show that at all. Uh, there's a number of states right now that are still very close, but like Michigan and Wisconsin, the pollsters had him up by five or six points. And right now it's a nail biter in mm. those states. So, I mean, this is going to be another couple of days, I think, before we actually know who's, who's the president. All right, locally record turnout here in Rhode Island, 482,000 people voting in this election, Joe. What does it tell you about the race and the direction of the state's electorate? Well, I think it tells us a couple of things. One, the voters were very enticed to go out and vote yesterday, but also everyone was allowed to vote by mail. We also had the early voting this time. I think those two new things really helped get a lot more people involved in the election this year. So that really increased the turnout. But again, Rhode Islanders came out yesterday in strong numbers. All right, you know, another race with big implications last night. Cranston, obviously, right. the Associated Press projecting that House Speaker Nicholas Mattiello loses his seat to Cranston First Lady Barbara Fenton Funk. So do you think the controversy surrounding the speaker finally caught up with him? Do you think it was something else? Yeah. There's no question. The controversy has caught up with him. He's had three elections now in a row that were very tight. The first one, he won by 85 votes and 300 votes. And now we have the Brit trial that just happened. There's been a lot of negative things going on. Also, keep in mind, Barbara Fenton Fung was also very much well-funded. Mm. That helped her a lot, plus her husband being the mayor of Cranston was very popular. All that together gave her a big advantage of this race. So we're not breaking any news here saying that Speaker Mattiello and Governor Raimondo haven't seen eye to eye no. always on many things. Uh, if these results hold and Mattiello is out, who is potentially in line to replace him? Well, obviously the uh, House Majority Leader Joe Sakachi would probably be the favorite at this point, but I think you might see some other groups forming to try to get the speakership. Again, the progressives may do something, but I would think you'll notice in the next couple of days, the Democrats will probably move to caucus to try to get the speaker elected right away. All right, real quickly, presidential race, let's recap what we're watching right now, the states that we are watching right at this moment. We're watching Arizona, we're watching Nevada, we're watching uh, North Carolina, Georgia, uh, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. So there's a lot, and all of them are getting fairly close at this time. Mm. Yeah, nine states still counting yeah. at this hour. All right, Joe, we'll be joining you again at uh, yeah. 730 on Fox Providence for the latest. I'm sure we'll have uh, more developments to report <laughs> during that hour as well.